What's up and good afternoon guys. Welcome back to another video. We are here in Workfort World Headquarters, which looks like an absolute mess in my mind. I guess it's kind of a controlled chaos situation with inventory everywhere. And for those of you that have been blowing up the Work For It Apparel website, I want to sincerely thank you guys for helping to spread and grow the Work For It movement. And for those of you that are new to the channel, you're probably wondering, what is the Work For It movement? So the Work For It movement was something that I founded because I was sick of seeing these new generation or this next generation coming up, these younger kids seeing all these internet millionaire billionaires thinking, oh, these guys just made a ton of money by developing an app, took little to no work, so why the hell am I going to want to go out there and work? And that's just absolutely not true. Everybody that has really made it in life has failed at some point, has busted their ass, whatever it took to get to the top. It didn't, wasn't just something that was happening to him. So the work for a movement was kind of a, a way to take pride in hard work, to take pride in blue collar work. You know, I don't have a college degree. I was a 4.0 student, decided, you know what, I'm going to go do blue collar work. I'm going to start my own construction company and I could not be happier with the choice that I made. And I know I'm not the only guy out there. So the work for a movement was kind of something started to at least bring back pride to blue collar work and to help promote those that go out there every single day, bust their ass, doesn't matter what you do, what kind of career you're in, just the fact that you're willing to apply yourself and work your hardest towards, you know, chasing your goals, making your dreams come true. That's what the Work For It movement is. But let's just jump right into what the topic of this video is, and I'm sure you see it looming over my shoulder, this ominous creature on the screen. Let's talk about it. So you guys have been blowing up my emails, my direct messages, comments on my YouTube videos saying, what is your opinion of the new Chevy 5500, 4500, the whole medium duty line that Chevy is now re-released? And I know there's a lot of YouTubers out there that do not like to take requests, but you're damn right I'll take requests because this channel is for you guys. And being that we actually do own a medium duty truck, um, if you have not seen the Kodiak video, it is right here. I feel like I've got a decent understanding, or at least I can kind of gather a good opinion on the new medium duty trucks that Chevy is bringing to light. And it's actually something that I've been really excited for and I've waited a long time for because I do love the Kodiak. So when the spy pictures were released for the new 4500s, I was actually really disappointed. Now, if you guys don't know, Chevy has partnered up with Navistar to build the new medium duty trucks. The whole reason the medium duty truck market kind of died off for Chevy is during the recession in 2008, 2009, Chevy had to trim a lot of fat. And I know you guys are going to say Chevy got a bunch of bailout money, government motors. Well, just so you know, Ford also got a ton of money. They didn't call it a bailout. It was in the term of a super low interest loan. So to say Ford didn't get any money, that's also a lie. Um, Ford just did it a little bit differently, politically, whatever you want to call it. Anyways. So I guess Chevy didn't really want to tool up this time for their medium duty trucks in the event that something like this would happen. So they partnered up with Navistar, who as we know, makes medium duty trucks. So that being said, when they released this, this has a very Navistar-ish grill. And I was not a big fan of this look of the truck. It really worried me. Because if you see the front end of a Navistar truck, compared to the enormity, I guess, of the cab, I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of like one of those like, snooty guys with the little hairline mustache whose mouth is like that. I don't know how to explain it. Smoking a cigarette on like one of those really long Cruella de Vil things. Um, there's something about it I absolutely hate. So I was really worried about this partnership with Navistar. But much to my surprise, thanks to Chevy's clever uh, disguising of their test truck, we have the new 2019 Chevy Silverado, no longer Kodiak, 4500, 5500, I believe they released the 6500 as well. I don't know about a 7500, but I know in the Kodiak range they had the 7500 as well, so we shall see if that comes next. So, right off the bat, we're going to look into what is the most fundamental change in the, I guess, we're not even calling it Kodiak line. So aside from the name, the most fundamental change of the medium duty truck line from Chevy is the cab. So if you remember from the Kodiaks, which I'll put right here, Kodiaks had... What I say is exclusive to the Kodiak line cab, but we all know it is actually the Chevy Express van cab put onto a truck chassis, which I actually really liked. And that is a Kodiak model that we have, and it just allows a ton of headroom. You can actually stand up for the most part in it, move around, maneuver like really well. It's actually a really large truck, and a really large truck warranted a really large cab. So that was one of the best things that Chevy had ever done. Now, Clearly, they've gone to the standard Silverado cab on this truck, which is the same thing that Ford does with the F650, the F750, all that. Um, they just put enlarged front fenders on it. Now, the downside to this is you obviously lose the amount of space that you would have in the original Kodiak. You don't have all that extra leg room, the room to put the fold-down bed in the back, any of that, because you are in the same standard pickup cab that we all have that have Silverados. So that is a downside. Now, the upside to that being, if you remember from the Kodiaks, you had to really aftermarketly, uh, I guess, jazz up the interiors. Uh, jazz hands? I don't know. Um, you have to kind of aftermarketly 
really pimp out the interiors to get a nice interior because they really were selling them as a work truck and they just would not afford you the luxuries that you would really want because a lot of guys bought Kodiaks not to use them as an actual construction or work related vehicle that used them to tow their boat to the river. Um, if you actually look on Craigslist or on the internet, you'll find a lot of like 20,000 mile 2006 Kodiaks because literally they stayed at a guy's river house and all he did was use that to tow his boat to the actual launch ramp because he needed a big badass cool looking truck to do it. So a lot of people with money were buying these trucks and building them and building them out actually nicely, but you just didn't have that option from the factory from Chevy. So with switching over to the Silverado cab, we may see options such as a high country 4500. Um, I think something like that would be really cool. I don't necessarily, to be honest with you, see Chevy, um, I guess, allowing that option as a standard build out from the factory. But the beautiful thing is everything will convert over to these trucks. And I know they're offering them with the 4G, the Apple Play, the Android Play. So you're getting all those features. So I'm assuming you're getting the 8-inch uh, touchscreen dash, which obviously they haven't released a whole lot of info on these yet as of this video um, being filmed. So some of this info might come out after I post the video, whatever. Anyways, as we know now is you're getting certain infotainment options. which leads me to believe you're going to get a little bit higher trim levels with this than you were with the Kodiak. And another upside to this cab is if you've ever been inside of a newer Silverado or a newer GMC Sierra or any of the newer GM vehicles, they are insanely quiet inside. Now, contrast that to being inside of a Kodiak, it is insanely loud. The doors are super thin. There is very little insulation. They are just loud trucks. So another thing with switching over to the Silverado cab is we obviously get to retain the Silverado tow mirrors, which... To me, it's kind of a give or take. I do love these tow mirrors, but I actually do really love the actual old Kodiak mirrors. They came out from about here. They were huge. They were awesome. Tons of visibility. Okay, so I think we've talked enough about the cab being a regular Silverado cab and what's going to kind of do for a medium duty truck. But let's move on to the front assembly here. And this is where it gets a little similar to Ford and their F650. Is Chevy essentially took a pickup truck cab and bolted on a large front fender assembly, thus making it a medium duty truck. Now this whole hood assembly is the same as the Kodiak in that it is a front flip assembly, um, which allows you tons and tons of accessibility around the engine, on the sides of the engine, underneath the engine. But aside from functionality, let's go to the aesthetics of the front end. While I must say this looks a lot better than the Navistar front end that I thought was gonna be coming on these trucks, there are some things that I really, really need to pick apart. First of all, as you see, we're running the 2014 to 2015, 16, um, 1500 Silverado headlights. Now, being that this truck's being released in 2019, Chevy can very easily have engineered these as either their own independent set of headlights or to a newer version of these old style headlights. And if you remember from the old Kodiaks, they still had the old sealed halogen headlights in them back in 2005, which actually blew my mind as to why they would put such a crappy headlight in such an expensive truck. So the fact that we're getting 1500, old 1500 headlights on this truck, it, it's not exactly Chevy's best move. But that being said, it does afford a lot of customability. Customizability, customability, customizability. Let's go with that one. Um, as you guys know, back in the day, if you wanted to change out the Kodiak headlights, you had to actually custom fiberglass in, uh, I think they were doing like Yukon headlights, which as you'll see right here, there's a lot of good, I guess, examples of that, but it actually took a lot of work. It took a lot of body work and it was just more money and time than most people wanted to do with their Kodiak. Now, if we switch to look at this truck straight on, it's actually a pretty mean looking truck and I do give Chevy credit. They did a lot of good things that I like, but like I said, we're kind of picking apart some of the bad things on the front end. One of which being why the Chevy bow tie is not either centered on this piece or centered in the entire grill itself. I have no idea. I don't know who made that decision. Not the greatest decision, but it just really throws me off. Now, once again, not a huge issue. An aftermarket grill or doing something custom could pretty easily solve it. But from the factory, why? <laughs> Anyways, Chevy went ahead and put the nice embossed Chevrolet in the actual bezel of the grill, which is actually really nice. I do like that. I give him credit for that. And aside from like the weird misproportions and a little bit off-centeredness of certain things of this grill, I actually do like the truck from about there up. Now coming down is where we run into similar looks and issues of the original Kodiak. One of which being this entire giant gap they leave between the front fenders and the bumper. They did that on the original Kodiak as well and 
Part of me says it's probably because of the tilt-up hood, but I think they'd be able to design a better design to where this bumper gap could close up, and it would just be a nice, tighter, looking truck. And then it also looks like they went ahead and shrunk the bumper a little bit. Now it's hard to tell in pictures and maybe in person this is actually going to be a giant bumper but on the Kodiaks the bumper actually looked bigger than this which was more proportioned to the truck. So it looks like they went ahead and shrunk this a little bit which looks a little bit goofy. Don't hate it. Like I said, gotta see it in person. And they also went with what looks to be really cheap, standard, old fog lights. So once again from there up I would actually do really like it. If you just go there down, it looks like a very basic, unthought out truck. And while we're up at the front end, let's talk powertrains. So, neighbor's driving by, Mustang. Hopefully he doesn't crash. So with the old Kodiak, you had actually a few different options of engine. You can either go Duramax, you can go Cat. I believe they have one other option I don't remember off the top of my head. This they're so far releasing saying it's going to be with the 6.6 Duramax, which would be the L5P and of course the Allison transmission, which is to me a bulletproof combo, other than the fact that obviously the L5P is not tunable yet. I know, here comes all the hate mail. Yes it is, DuramaxTuner.com, look at so and so, they got an inline tuner, that's not a true deletable tuner. Um, but anyways, I'm really curious to see if they're actually going to be releasing other options when these things actually get closer to a production date. But as of now, it looks like just the Duramax is being offered. Now for those of you wondering why people like medium duty trucks, what the appeal is to the commercial world, the construction world, and why people flock to them is mainly because of the customizability of the bed. So anything from the cab back. So with the new 4500s and up, Chevy is offering seven cab to axle lengths, that would be the frame lengths, depending on what type of bed you want, and five back of axle to end of frame lengths. So you can essentially customize the length of the truck to fit whatever need you have. So if we go back to the original picture, you can see here they have a utility bed on the truck, which is clearly longer of a frame than in the picture we just showed previously. And I know we all keep seeing the crew cab version of this truck, but this is probably gonna be the more common configuration of the new 4500s and up. It's gonna be a single cab, not necessarily a dump bed, but something similar to a shorter utility style bed or something of that kind. And to me, seeing a configuration like this, they just don't seem to have that girth and that size, that sounds horrible, of the uh, of the Kodiak. So if I were to ever get one, it would definitely be the crew cab variation. Now one of the other things you can do with a medium duty truck is you can actually put a pickup bed on it. It was huge in the Kodiak scene, and now to where the actual truck scene has grown to where everybody's looking for the next biggest, baddest thing. This is going to be one of the huge, most customizable or customized vehicles I can see coming in the next couple of years. But one of the biggest flaws with the Kodiak running a standard Silverado bed was that the bed just did not line up with the windows, and it always looked like it sat stupidly low. It was one of my biggest pet peeves with these trucks, and why nobody ever came up with, especially considering the amount of money people were putting into their Kodiaks, why nobody ever fabricated a custom bed that came up just a little bit higher so it actually met that reveal of the actual side windows, I don't know, but somebody should have done it. Which brings us to one of the huge benefits of running a pickup truck cab. Now when you made up an actual pickup bed to the new 4500s, it's gonna mate perfectly and it's gonna look just like a Silverado would or just like a GMC would. Which also leads us to the giant back window of the old Kodiak obviously is gonna be replaced by the standard back Silverado window. And while this window was awesome for visibility, when it was out in the open like this without having some kind of steak bed or some kind of headache rack behind it, it just didn't look that good out in the open. So the new 4500 is actually going to look a lot better from behind. But if we just throw out all the practicality of the truck, let's fast forward to what I'm sure a lot of you have clicked on this video for, and that is the customization of the new 4500s. If you want the biggest, the baddest, the best truck out there, and to kind of topple over any competition that you can find, this is what's going to be coming to truck shows near you, I guarantee it. And while the Kodiak customization market was huge, a lot of people were doing it, there weren't a lot of, I guess, companies on board with it, so a lot of stuff was kind of getting either low-key built at home, or shops are customizing it and doing a lot of one-offs. Well, the truck market's changed, social media has changed it, just the world in itself has changed, and companies need to keep up with what client demands are. So I foresee we're going to be seeing a lot of trick parts for these trucks. And you can just tell with how quickly renderings for these vehicles come out, the social media market is insanely huge and insanely quick. And they want it and they want it now. And to be honest with you, this is what gets me the most excited about seeing these trucks. I always tell you guys, when new vehicles come out or new trucks come out specifically, wait until you see them lifted if you don't like the look of them. It's happened with me on almost every single new vehicle that's come out. Once I see them lifted, it all starts to make sense and it just becomes a much better looking vehicle. And this is no exception to that rule. 
Look at how beefy and mean this truck looks. Obviously, this is shown with an any level lift, which if you guys do not know what the any level lift is, I'm going to put a little video of it right here. You guys need to check out any level lift. It is one of the coolest concepts out there. But as of now, it is only for the Ford F-350. Uh, I think they just started doing F-250 market. And clearly, being that this is a solid axle truck and one of Chevy's few solid axle trucks, it would actually be possible to run a lift of this style on these trucks. Now that being said, any level lift would have to design and come up with it for this truck, which I don't foresee happening for probably another four to five years at the soonest. Unless somebody throws a ton of cash at them and wants a one-off for SEMA. But here we actually see it with the Silverado dually bed and the body lines line up as they would on the normal Silverado. And just fit and form of the truck bed on this cab configuration is just so much cleaner. Now that being said, it does look like the actual older style Kodiaks when they were using the older square body-ish era of Chevy cabs on the Kodiaks prior to them using the van body. So it starts to look a little reminiscent of that, but the new body lines of it actually do make it look like a nice new truck. So all in all, this is actually one of the few new release trucks that I'm not walking away from saying, what the heck were they thinking? Nobody's going to buy that. This is actually one that I'm really excited for, and I know the biggest question is going to be, Rhino, are we going to be seeing one of these in the driveway soon? And the problem is, it's got an L5P in it. I can't buy an L5P truck until they make a parts fall off while you're driving tune for it. Until that happens, there's just no fun in owning a diesel truck unless you have parts fall off of it. So that is really the only reason that is stopping me from going out right now, selling the GMC and picking up or at least putting in an order for one of these trucks. And I'm really genuinely excited and curious to see what kind of trim options they're going to be including in this because I think they're going to be missing a huge market if they don't offer the upper level trims because there's a lot of people that do not want to use this as a work truck. I mean, in this configuration, this is one big, beautiful, badass truck, and I would daily drive the shit out of this. So hopefully Chevy listens to its customers and learns from the previous Kodiak that we will pay more money for higher trim options. Just make them available. And with that, guys, we're going to wrap up this video. I want to sincerely thank all of you for watching my videos, subscribing to my channel. If you have not clicked subscribe, please do so now. Please give this video a like, aka a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and stay tuned for the BBB build. We've got big announcements coming with that, and maybe PPEI, where are you? We need an L5P tune, please. My birthday's coming up. Not really. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see an L5P tune soon, and then I can just scrap the whole BBB project, build one of these, and then we'll all be happy. I'm just kidding. We're going to build the BBBB. 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 God, I'm getting so confused with these Bs. Anyways, I appreciate you guys' patience with the BBB build. Like I said, big announcements coming soon, and we're going to keep you updated on the entire process of that build. And as always, don't forget to check out Work Forward Apparel. You guys are the best. Appreciate it. I'm out. Damn. Uh. Yeah.